Our third team up for today is going to be Air. 418. You guys are a rookie team. A couple of you have a little bit of experience, but wow, what a fantastic design you come up with in just 30 hours. First time doing Robot in 30 hours as well. So introduce yourselves and uh, let us know what you come up with and let's showcase it off. As you said, we are Air 418. My name is Jackson. I'm Derek. I'm Michael. And this year we chose a really simplistic design. We were hoping to be we were hoping for a robot that was easy to work with and also really stable because this year stability seems to be, it seems to play a really big factor in the overall game. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash FIRST to register your team. Uh, this was not our first design. Our first design had like uh, an active intake and then a linear slide that we were going to flip the cones onto the top of the rods. We scrapped that very, very quickly because we realized that it's just too many moving parts to reasonably accomplish in 30 hours. And we eventually switched over to this simplistic four bar design because it just goes up and down. However, we, uh, we did have to sacrifice a bit of height. We can't quite reach some of the higher rods to score more points. But if this were like, if this were outside the 30 hour build challenge, we would have different ways to account for that. Unfortunately, we just didn't have enough time to really work around some of those issues. We're still pretty happy with our final design, though. It is decently fast. We've cut the drive frame down, so it's 12 by 18, to make maneuvering through some of these tight gaps a little easier. The um, claw went through four iterations, which is a challenge in itself, because we have to 3D print every iteration, and that takes several hours. But this final iteration is very thick to provide extra grip. We've also stacked a ton of rubber bands and double-sided tape on to make sure those cones just don't slip out of our grasp like that. Uh, what else? So you guys said you went through four different iterations, right? And for that, what did. What'd you start out with and how'd you come up with what you have now? I believe we brought in a, a, one claw with us but it was, it was too small, it was too narrow, and the cones kept slipping out every time we grabbed them. And then the second and third iterations were far, far too big. They were like four inches over the 18 inch gap. And this final design here is, it's n just the right length where we can get enough grip on that cone, but it also lets us stay within that 18 inch boundary. One of the things you mentioned, uh, you, you seemed a little disappointed that you might not be able to reach the tallest uh, power pole on there. I don't actually think that's a disadvantage. I think for some teams, I, the strategy might not even dictate going for those sometimes on there. So uh, for you guys, I think what you've designed is, is actually fantastic, at, you know, coming in as a rookie team especially. Uh, when you talked about cutting the drive base down for things, uh, how much improvement did you see in regards to negotiating the field, cutting down on your drive base? Well, with the... Um the original 18 by 18 frame, we were running into specifically these like really tall ones in the middle. We would knock into them sometimes. And well, when the really tall ones get bumped even a little, you can see they sway a lot more. And we just wanted to minimize any chance of accidentally getting like really big 20, 30 point penalties this year. So once we cut those six inches off, we started to notice it's a little easier to maneuver slowly and we're able to weave between all of these different goals and get the cones that we want. Uh, you guys, you have a camera on the front of your robot. Have you uh, thought out some of your autonomous strategy or process, what you're looking to do for that? Uh, yes, we have uh, worked really hard to try and get a, a system working that will detect the, um, the color that and parking spot we need to be in for our autonomous. Unfortunately, we have not gotten that working uh, at the moment. But um, we're working on a system to, that'll 
uh, function properly, and we're going to switch color spaces from RGB to HSL. Um, so. Coming for a first time uh, from a programming standpoint, what are maybe some, uh, uh, as you get into the actual competition season, what are maybe a couple autonomous routines you have in mind? Um, so we were, we were hoping to implement cones into our autonomous routine. Currently, we just have parking because we did run a little short on time at the end there. Uh, so, so when you say cones, like, what, can you run me through, like, you know, hey, your oh, first competition is in a few months, right? Like, what is maybe a, an autonomous routine you want to accomplish in the next couple of weeks? Uh, so the, the very first thing you do is you scan the, um, the randomized element, and you see where you have to park at the very end. And then we'll probably take our preloaded cone. Ideally, you'd score it on the highest one. You'd get more points. Uh, we'd have to change our hardware a lot for that. Sure. And then after that, we would park in the, uh, the designated zone. Maybe if we're like really later into the season, we might start going for more cones. Depends on whether or not we can get like odometry and other bells and whistles set up. Looking uh, from a mechanical side in there, you said you know mechanical changes need to be made. So as you uh, go back to your build space and start to build up for the competition season, what are maybe some things that you might incorporate from this robot? And is there anything on this robot you're like, this is absolutely not something we're going to use uh, during competition season? Uh. So the claw design was really nice because it, well, once we like finalized the design, we got through all four iterations. Sure. It was really, really consistent. Another really uh, big benefit we discovered early on is that if you're going to go really high up, you want your, you want to manage your center of gravity really well. So we whiffed our arm. Can you um, put it all the way up for a moment? You can see that it doesn't extend over the edge of the robot in any way which might put us at risk for tipping. And we've also put a lot of the weight near the back of the robot, which again, helps stabilize it, prevents it from tipping over. Uh, lastly, uh, you know, coming from as a, a rookie team for about 30 hours, uh, any advice for other rookie teams starting their season on how they should probably approach uh, power play? So don't be discouraged by like, having to start over because we had to scrap a lot of designs in the last 30 hours and start from basically nothing. It can be a little demoralizing at first. Sure. Because like you've sunk six hours into this, this piece of metal and now you have to take it all apart. But um, at the end of the day, as long as you can build a different system and as long as you know where your faults are and how you can improve them, it doesn't really matter how many times you have to start over. I'd say it's also worth um, planning a lot before you like even get started. Having something, a very solid idea that you think will work in mind before you even like uh, start putting screws and bolts, uh, that'll really help you out in the long term. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Special thanks to Team 8680, Cracking Pinion, for hosting Robot in 30 Hours and also to their sponsors.